And look, I want to welcome the Premier, the Treasurer, um, the Minister for Emergency Services and Flood Recovery, and particularly Commissioner York, Deputy Commissioner um, Daniel and Mark, our local officer with the SES. And this is a great announcement because what it means is our local SES volunteers are being supported in the way that they need to be to do the job they do to help keep our community safe. And every time I talk about what we need here, it's always with that in mind, that our local volunteers need the support and that our local community needs that support too. And um, it's a significant announcement, $132 million, and it has a few other pieces in it that I'd just like to talk about because it's splitting the northern zone into two new zones. That's really important locally. For some years, we've talked about more local control, more local capacity, and that this announcement brings some of that to bear. Also, 18 critical priority unit facilities across the state. One of them is Mwoolumba. Um, sometimes you may forget I cover a bigger electorate. Mwoolumba is in the electorate of Lismore and the building there is one I've banged on about for a while and um, that will be upgraded. So I'm very pleased to see that. Look, our local um, SES or as the minister referred to them, our Orange Army, um, they do great work. We do need some more volunteers and with better resourcing and better localism at the heart and centre of SES, we will be able to attract more volunteers and that's important. But we also need to attract what we call our spontaneous volunteers, all the locals who went out in tinnies and rescued people um, during the floods. So they will be able to be incorporated better into the rescues that we have and supported. And I've had those discussions with the Premier, Treasurer, Minister, Commissioner York. But look, it's a great announcement. It's a pre-budget announcement. I'm not sure how many budget announcements you'll have left, um, Premier, when running, you go running, into Parliament. Plenty to go. Plenty to go. And um, George, you're in answer One to your time. question. I've already lobbied the Treasurer on housing, OK? <laughs> so you'll hear more, all right? So thank you, everybody, and thank you, media, for being out on public holiday. <laughs> Thank you. This is a really exciting day for me personally as the Commissioner, but for SES in general across the whole of New South Wales. It will allow us to have better resources, better facilities, assist our volunteers in what they have to do when they're called out to help our communities in a, in a time of need. So this money will be able to be uh, spent on those facilities and give us some state-of-the-art facilities uh, across the state in all our zones where we work with partner emergency service agencies and lead the responses to flood storms and tsunamis and we need good facilities and this budget announcement will give us those improved facilities. It will help us support our volunteers because they are the critical backbone of the New South Wales SES in recruiting, in training and in facilities and in equipment. So it's, it's very exciting. It's the biggest boost as said to our financial um, uh, bank account that we have ever had in the history of the New South Wales State Emergency Service and I thank the government for this investment. Mm -hmm. More particularly up here in the Northern Rivers, we will, as stated, be uh, centering a new incident command centre here at Lismore because we do listen to the community to say that we need to be with the community. Our volunteers are from this community and they will work in uh, great facilities up here in a better way when we are called upon in those times of need by the community to help them, to save them, to prepare them for some of the uh, significant events that we face and to make sure that they're as safe as possible and that their community is safe. So it's a terrific announcement for us today. I'm really excited. I can't get the smile off my face, um, but I thank the government for this investment. It uh, will really make a significant difference to the New South Wales State Emergency Service. Questions? It will be out of a flood prone area, for, certainly. It will be in a safe area where we can access uh, those communities that need us um, at the time of significant events. 
this is one of the options. We will now that uh, the, the uh, funding has been confirmed be work, working very hard on identifying um, the best location for us to work on for the size uh, and then work on the uh, buildings. We do have um, uh, uh, building designs already drawn up for some of these premises so that will be done very quickly. It's the identification of the land um, and moving it but it will be at Lismore as announced and it will be reflective of helping this community at, the, at a time of their most need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will it mean more jobs? It will be, mean more jobs. There's approximately 70 additional um, staff that will be employed across a range of different areas across the state and certainly more people into, more staff members into these incident command centres so that we can lead appropriately in the time of need. Um, and it is all about, though, supporting our volunteers. So there will be increased staff in relation to training, I, um, information and technology, uh, communications and vital positions that we need when we set up these incident command centres that we have the most appropriately skilled and professional staff available to help those volunteers when they go out. Mm. It's also important to remember that a lot of the volunteers will come into these centres and work when there is a significant event on and so it's not just about the staff it's about making sure the premises are fit for purpose for our volunteers to work in and a lot of positions that they do for us um, at a time of need. Uh, will it be manned full time or is that not decided yet? The zones are resourced full time um, and it's like any normal government um, organisation uh, and they will be able to help the volunteers um, at their training nights um, to make sure their units are appropriate, to look at um, improvements as, as stated on 18 critical uh, units that are um, of, a, of a poor standard. Um, but the zones themselves, which we will now have seven across this state, will be fully resourced full time. And there were some criticisms in regards to communication during the flood. With this money, will that go towards maybe uh, fixing some of those issues? Uh, there's a number of projects. Um, this will touch on it, but we have also another uh, couple of projects that we have been funded on in relation to uh, call out procedures for our volunteers, uh, looking at communication, and we are always working with the Telco Authority in improving. Um, those communications across some of these vulnerable communities. How will these structural changes actually stop a repeat of what happened on the 28th of February? Well, if I if I understand you correctly, the question, um, you know, we we anticipate obviously that there will be more flooding into the future. This uh, past one in February March was of record levels. Uh, what we really want to do is prepare um, the communities for when this will happen. So we want to make sure that we have the right information going out, the right warnings. We have as much time as possible to warn those communities and work with the Bureau of Meteorology in relation to their warnings um, and, and uh, forecasts and educate the community on what they can do before the event so that uh, what happened in February, March doesn't happen again and we make sure that the community remains as safe as possible.